This is Twit. Uh, how would you like to just for old time's sake answer a question? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a call. Sounds for great. Him. What do you say? All right, here we go, Kevin. Let's take our call. All right. From Patrick in Greenbelt, Maryland. Hey, Patrick. Hello. Hello. How are you today? Hey, Patrick. I'm well. How are you? Good. Patrick um, is a so graduate. He's a PhD, yep. graduate studies in material science. Love that. What is material mm -hmm. science? A uh, really broad field has to do with materials, which make everything up. The so science of materials. Anything you can imagine. Yeah. I always thought that was interesting. Like, you wouldn't make a bridge out of cream cheese because no. it, it, it has a very good compaction uh, ratio, but the torque ratio isn't so mm. hot. That kind of thing. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so to give you a better idea, so I work on like fuel cells and batteries. Oh, neat. New materials that will work better for those applications. Oh, that's really interesting. Do you have a Tesla? No, I don't. My uh, advisor does, though. Yeah, yeah. So. Do you have a Tesla? I have one on order. You're getting a Model 3? Uh, yes. Yes. I have an I have X. An X on, I have an X on order as well. The so doors go like the baby. That. Need the X. It's perfect for a baby. You yeah. can open it up and you can just put the baby right in there. That's what you do. <laughs> just slam them right in. Slam them right on them. What can we do for you, Patrick? So right now, um, I have my own domain name that, that I have like the MX records set to go to Google with a G Suite account, and I use Google to manage my email. Um, I'm looking for alternatives other than using Google. Um, I don't really use the Gmail interface. I use the Apple Mail app. Instead, just right. doing um, IMAP on it, so it doesn't really matter to me what the service yeah, is. Yeah, so you're, th you're thinking of thinking Google, basically. Other than the yeah, so so the way email, uh, it, you know, in a nutshell, the way email works is somebody sends message to an address. That's the address you bought, and you own that, right? You didn't buy it. Did you buy it through Google Domains or? No, I, I own the full domain. Perfect. So, you, so they send it to that address. That address in its DNS record has an MX record, that's an email record, mm -hmm. that says, oh, no, 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 I don't want it. Send, it. send it over there. And the mail basically bounces off the registrar and goes to, in your case, goes to Gmail. And you're using Gmail basically as uh, an IMAP message store. Uh, which is, you know, and it's not even mm -hmm. a very, by the way, it's not even a very good IMAP message store. But it, it has one advantage, it's absolutely free, except if, if you pay for G Suite, then it's not. So what do you do? How do you do? I've luckily here? got an old enough account that it's free. Oh, that's yeah. good. At least that's. I good. actually use Google Suite. Uh, the, I got to tell you, the reason I do this though is because I'm paranoid, and I know Google has a great security team. Uh, you, you know, there has never, to my knowledge, been a Google breach. Yeah, for, right? for the email, I don't think so. For anything, as far as I know, I mean, you t there's hard Yahoo, three billion accounts or whatever. Right. I mean. Google, absolutely. And, uh, and of course, you know a lot of the guys, and I think Google is, is very well designed. I don't use Google. I used to use, I'll tell you why I used to. What I used to do, here's my, here's my old system. I own my own domain, leoville.com. I've had it since 95. Uh, in the DNS record, my, uh, my MX record pointed to Gmail. So if you sent something to my email address, it would then go to Gmail. Mm -hmm. And the reason I did that is because Gmail had the best anti-spam stuff. Right. right? It's got collaborative anti-spam. Right. And I considered that my sewage treatment facility. And then I would have another service, Fastmail, fetch the mail from Gmail, and I used Fastmail as my primary message store. Hmm. So I really pa basically was passing it through Why Gmail. Why Fastmail, though? Fastmail is the, well, in my opinion, the best IMAP implementation mm. out there. It's really, really good. Opera bought them for a while, but they sold it back to the original Fastmail founders. Here's a couple of features I like about it. It's not free. You're going to pay maybe a hundred bucks a year if you if you have a lot of a lot of content going through there. Nine dollars a month for the professional. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually probably pay more than that because I, I'm used to Gmail, so I just keep all my email. I never delete email, so right. I need a lot of storage. It has. A couple of things I really like. Spam Assassin, mm -hmm. which is a very powerful, very open smart... Open source, right? Open source anti-spam filtering. I, f I used to think I needed Gmail to get rid of the spam. When I turned off Gmail, I found out, no, Spam Assassin's doing mm. fine. So Spam Assassin, it also has something called Civ. Now, this goes way back to the dim, dark days of email. Civ is a command line-based 
filtering program. <laughs> and now, fortunately, FastMail has a good GUI interface to it. So you can set up rules. Rules to me are, if without rules, you have nothing, right? <laughs> Email is unusable. Is that right? Well, I mean, I don't really use rules. I got, I, you use it to filter and sort and move things. Yes. Around. Are you using Apple Mail? No, well, you can because it's an IMAP server. So right. one of the reasons you want IMAP, and I think you probably uh, already know this, Patrick, is that this, so you need somewhere to put your email. In the old days, you'd have a pop mail server, which meant they'd hold it for you, but then right. you'd download it and it would live on your machine. And as soon as people got more than one machine, they realized this is crazy. Right, right. saying leave it on the server, download it over here, and it was just a mess. It made sense in the old days when ISPs had to pay for that storage space. It was expensive. So they didn't want your email on their server. They wanted you to host, you right. know, to have it on your own server. When Gmail came along, that changed everything. Sure. Because they said unlimited storage, keep everything, it's free. And that really put pressure on everybody to move to a better system, which is IMAP. Now, Gmail is not IMAP, it's IMAP-like. Right. And the biggest issue Gmail has with IMAP is this tagging, this filtering system. Right. It doesn't use real filters. Right. It doesn't move stuff into folders. It tags gives them a tag. Right, that's what I use. And the problem with these tags is a real IMAP client, like Apple Mail... It ignores them, right? Well, it's confused by them. Yeah. So, of course, Apple Mail has to work with Gmail, so they they ha have workarounds. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Thunderbird or Claws or any like powerful yeah, IMAP, that's a good point. it's it gets confused by this tagging system. Yeah. One of the advantages tagging has is email can live, it can have multiple tags, right? right? And so, in your view on Gmail, it looks like it's in multiple folders. That's different than IMAP folders, right? IMAP actually it has, has to, to be in the folder. It has to be in a folder. Right. You can have copies, but yeah, so it's a little different. Uh, I like IMAP. I think IMAP is a, it's an old, very solid standard. Every email client in the world supports it. Mm -hmm. And if you have a real IMAP host, like FastMail, it doesn't have to be FastMail, but like FastMail, you're going to have better success using clients. I right. think it's just going to work better. So I use the, and then Civ gives me the chance to write fairly complex, and I think people who use a lot of email end up coming up with fairly complex systems. You, I know what you do. You have many, many addresses. I right. Mean. Yeah. And then I just tag them and put them in a different, like, yeah. Yeah. So I want one address that everything goes to. And, and as I said, this address has been good for f since 1995. And then you use rules, keyword-based rules, or how do you do that? All kinds of rules. So I'll give you an example. Uh, if I see unsubscribe in the body of the message, that goes into a folder called mailing lists, and I never mm, look at it again. That's smart, actually. <laughs> yes, of course. If it's addressed, if I am in the to line, mm -hmm. not a CC, not to a hundred different people, but if I'm the one address in the two line, the only person in the two line, that goes to a special folder called Leo because I know that that was mail directly addressed to me, and the order is important too. I do the unsubscribe first. I love that you're giving people a way to hack and like send you email. No. <laughs> like it's fine. Nobody sends me email because I don't read it. And then <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of things you can do. Like, so good, a good filtration system is really important. A good anti-spam system is really important. FastMail, I think, is a very robust, solid email server. They have a lot of other things. They actually, you can, you can move your domain name to FastMail, and they will do all the domain hosting. They do the more sophisticated. There's some very sophisticated email stuff, reverse DNS stuff, and stuff that, that, that makes sure that you can't be spoofed. Yeah. All of the things that I really am looking for, FastMail does. So that's the one I use. But if you want so, security, you might use Proton Mail. I love Proton. I was just going to say Proton. That is the absolute most secure email service. And it uses out there. PGP encryption yeah. and behind the scenes. It's really cool. And that's Based a real in, the servers are in Switzerland. Yeah. In a well, not just in Switzerland, in a mountain. In Look, Switzerland. There's the mountain. There's the it's in the mountain. So you is know it it's really in the mountain? Yeah, they say so. Yeah, they've got an Android app, iOS app. It's yeah. it's pretty cool stuff. So the nice thing about this is that built-in end-to-end encryption. Yeah, can you do IMAP through this? Yeah. It, oh, you can? Yeah. So can you have a hosted domain here as well? That I don't know, but it, that really doesn't require them you just to point cooperate. The MX. Right. Right. So you can use anything that will accept email. Mm -hmm. You just have your domain host. You change your DNS record or your domain host. I use Hover, and I just go in there, and I say MX record, right. point to Proton. You just need a domain that allows you to go in, a uh, host that allows you to go in and edit those MX records. That's right. Because not right. all of them allow you to go to that level of detail, right? Man, not most, necessarily. Most There's another reason I like FastMail is you could move your domain name to FastMail, and they do provide all of that, plus some much more sophisticated uh, dom uh, uh, email security features. Email is pretty old, not very yeah. good. You don't use Pine anymore? 
You can. With fast mail, it works great. No, I'm a mutt guy. Kidding. I was no, kidding. I'm a mutt guy. You got to use mutt. Amazing. Mutt's the best. This if you is like command line, like old school. <laughs> oh, I use mutt in Emacs, and he's a graduate student, so I bet he does too. What do you so, use? What do you use? For? What's your mail client? I just use Apple Mail mostly. I've played with other things, but nothing was worth the hassle to switch. Actually, Apple Mail is pretty good. Plus, yeah, it supports so. PGP. Uh, which is nice. It also supports S MIME uh, certificates. I don't. I won't use an email client that doesn't let me, uh, in, not just encrypt, but sign my mail so that people can say, "Oh, that really came from Leo and it hasn't been modified." I think that's pretty yeah. Important. Have you seen these fancy ones with the AI built in, like Astro? Have you seen Astro? Yeah. Now? Well, now Google has this, right? There's one reason to stay with Google. Yeah. Is they're going to add this new autocomplete feature? I don't know if you saw Google I/O. Sundar Pichai wrote an email invitation to Taco Tuesdays. And he only, you know, had to hit a few keys and tab, and it just seemed to know that he wanted to do. He even he said, "Bring you, bring some smart compose." Here, watch this. As the name suggests, we use machine learning to start. So he, so wait a minute, stop. Phases for you. He, see that grayed out stuff? That's what the autocomplete is suggesting. So Sundar typed "haven't a s e," and it says, "Oh, you mean seen you in a while? Hit tab. Go on." As you type, all you need to do is to hit tab wow. and keep auto completing. Wow. Now, how did it know tacos? How did it know? Well, I mean, it, it's in the subject. Bring the chips. No, 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 no. Bring the chips and salsa. How did it know that? that anyway, is crazy. so that's the kind of thing Fastmail does not do and will never do, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. if that creeps you out, then Fastmail's a good choice. You may want to stay it with it. It takes Gmail. all the human component out of it, though. It's well, notice his, his message was kind of dopey. Let's get together soon. Stuff you probably wouldn't really say, right? Let's get together soon. For yeah, I guess you're right. You wouldn't yeah. say it for tacos. But I don't know how it knew bring the chips and salsa. That's... Wow. And it even suggested a time. Well, wait how a second it... now. Is it looking at your calendar? Yeah, to know that because you're free notice at it, six? It, it got his address, even though Sundar Pichai does definitely not lift at 34 Smith Street. Right. But... Uh, I think that that's pretty impressive. I will have to wait. You know, these demos always look so good, and then you get yeah. it and you go, oh, this doesn't work. But um, that might be one good compelling reason to stay with Gmail. Although, you know what? G Suite won't get that. I bet you anything. You get screwed with G Suite. Really? You get all this stuff, same stuff you as get, Gmail. No, there's all sorts of stuff you can't do. because like you have what? A, I don't know. Jeff Jarvis is always bitching about it. Oh, it's really? Something, yeah. <laughs> it's something out there. Something. <laughs> something. <laughs> anyway, you, that Same would be company, a reason though, to stay. I mean, with, that would be a good reason to stay with Gmail. Yeah. This is the problem. There's no one perfect email service. The beauty of it is because you own your own domain, it's easy. You just change the MX mm -hmm. record. You could use tomorrow. You could use Yahoo Mail if you were so inclined. <laughs> does that make sense, Patrick? <laughs> yeah, it does. Okay. Do uh, you know how to ch edit your DNS record? Yep, I set it up, and I've got it with Hover too. So I know oh, I've screwed things up with them before, and. Emailed yeah. them and they They're really good if you screw yeah. things. <laughs> They're yep. really good at that. Actually, in most cases, what you'll do is, like with Fastmail, is they'll have a help page. Here's how you mm. configure your domain name server to have mail forward. With Hover, unfortunately, and I, I wish they didn't do this, they do charge you, I think five, it's cheap, $5 a year, but they do charge you for that moving along. Hover, we should mention, is a sponsor of our fine show. Mm. And I, I love Hover. I, I feel like that should be free. Email bouncing, email redirection, that should just yeah. be free. But, you know, they got to make money somehow. Five bucks, big deal. Okay, well, any questions out, about uh, all that? I'll check out FastMail. And I had looked at ProtonMail, but I wasn't convinced on it. So Yeah, I mean, uh, Steve Gibson says good things about it. I'm sure it's fine. I think the thing with ProtonMail is I already have my own keys, PGP keys. Good man. And it was kind of like, I don't want to switch to a different thing exactly. when I already have mine all set up. I, I think that's so. the best thing to do. The problem is, is, for most people, it's so complicated, and you know nobody knows what their key is. and it's. Why not host your own mail server, though? It sounds like he's definitely could pull it off if you're doing PGP. Reliability. Yeah, like, wanna... for the one day that it's not yeah. up and I yeah. don't get an email, I don't want to deal with that. That's fair. So I, I tell you, I'm sure there are other, and I would love to hear from people if they have, you know, IMAP services they love. First of all, you got to use IMAP, but there are many, many IMAP services out there. I guess you could use Exchange Mail if you're really tied into the Microsoft ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Exchange has some features uh, that IMAP doesn't have. But um, I, for me, for uptime, reliability, service support, and everything, I fast mail. I've been with them for years, and I've really been happy with their. Uh, the job they do. Well, great. Thank you for the yeah. recommendation. My pleasure. Nice to talk to you, Patrick. 
So you, thank you. You just like what do you do? You just set up if you want, like you just set up a new email account. Kevin? Yeah, I mean, essentially, I I go into that's how you filter. Yeah, as new email accounts, yeah. right? And I'll just do Google domains and add a new account. They have one click to add a new user. Oh, that's it's nice. five dollars a month. So yeah. it is a little pricey. Yeah, be careful about. Yeah, so you just do you piling know. up the users. Exactly. You do know that you can. Um, you know this, but I'll tell people who don't know this. With Gmail, if you, first of all, ignore the dots. Right. You put all the dots. You can in put them want. anywhere. Doesn't yeah. matter. But what you can do is put a plus sign in. Mm -hmm. So if if your email address, well, I'll, I'll use mine, which is Laporte at Gmail. If I will, if I'm saying I want to make sure that this company isn't sending me spam, I'm signing up for something. Mm -hmm. I can do Laporte plus their company name at gmail.com. It'll still come to Laporte at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. But now I can see and I can even filter filter on it. and block that, that later. Yeah, yeah, right. So that is a nice feature. Anything following the plus in your Gmail, use your real Gmail address followed by plus, and then anything after that, it will all go into your inbox, but you'll be able to filter against the stuff that's after the mm -hmm. plus, which is, I think, very handy. You could just create, you know, Laporte plus spam at gmail.com, and God, I'm gonna get a lot of spam at that address. Good thing I don't use it anymore. <laughs> you know why, you know actually the real reason I stopped? Because it's a bad email address, Laporte, at Gmail, you never want to, like if you used Kevin at Gmail, you got in early, you got Kevin, it would be unusable. Well, I have Kevin Rose at Gmail, and it's That's, unusable. Is it? Yeah. Okay. But you really don't want, there's a guy who has Jim at AOL.com. Right. He cannot use his email because it's too generic. Yeah. Right? And the problem with Laporte, it's a very common French name, and I get all this French spam. Yeah. And plus, I think there are people who uh, put space in their email address, like Roland, Space Laporte at gmail.com. This that throws out Roland. Oh, crazy. So I I get in French, well, uh, the event you'll want to go to is tonight in Paris. And it's like, I wish I could go, but I'm not Roland. It's so good, I finally it's a good accent. Yeah, well, I like that. I, yeah, I'm practically French with a name like Laporte. <laughs> so that's why I don't use Gmail anymore. Anyway. Uh, anything else you want to say about email? You, 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 you tell me, tell me all your secrets. My email secrets? Yeah. I mean, I do, I'm pretty vanilla, man. Just Gmail app on my phone. Do you read your email? I do, yeah. Really? Well, I mean, I have it hidden, though. I don't like to put it you out publicly. You don't use Kevin Rose at Gmail That's right. anymore. Yeah. 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 Um, I go in there every once in a while and, and pick through things. That's, by the way, when we send him email, let's not use that address anymore? Okay. Just <laughs> have, have you guys been <laughs> using that? That's all we use. I have a bounce back saying I don't use it anymore. <laughs> okay. We yeah, have your yeah. real address. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea to have other addresses. It's easy on Gmail to create new addresses. If you're not on G Suite, it's free. Yeah. Create as many addresses as you want. I just, um, okay. I just thought you'd have something more sophisticated. Mm. I can't easy. even. Uh, oh, your mail's here. <laughs> By the way, Fastmail does have. How did you do that? That was very good. Fastmail does have uh, both iOS and Android apps that are pretty good. They're not as great as Apple Mail, but they're pretty good. Yeah.